Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? Man, it's a, be it's a, it's a beautiful day out there. A little, I don't know if you guys were outside yesterday. I tried to play golf after work last night, and it was, was it blowing 50 miles an hour? It was, it was crazy out there, but man, it's gorgeous out there. So great to see everybody. Welcome to the Guild. Uh, welcome to you all that are online, uh, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, or uh, some streaming. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a great day to be here. So um, do we have any first-time visitors here tonight? All right, great, thank you for coming. Do we have, do, yeah, give him a hand. You get, you get one meeting, next time you have to tell your life story. Okay, um, do we have any first time members tonight? I know I met a couple of people that just joined. Yeah, well, Connor, you met Connor earlier, Ben. Great to have you guys, so. Uh, we're uh, obviously uh, excited about any time we have new members, uh, especially with our new location and interacting with the Crossroads and First Friday. So, so welcome, guys. Uh, looking forward to, to seeing you around the shop. Um, right now, I'm going to hand the mic over to uh, David Roth. He's going to come up. We have a pretty special uh, uh, our yearly our yearly election. So, come on up, David. Thank you, Calvin. All right, today is a special session of the Wood Kansas City Workers Guild. The purpose of the special session is the election of board members and directors. We have a slate of officers, and the slate are, this is gonna be popped up on the screen up here. Board of members for president is Calvin Hobbs. For vice president, Ron Hall, over there. For member at large, Craig Arnold. He's right back there. All right. Directors are these names by title and their real name. Director of Membership, Jim Berard. Director of Communication, Brian Robaugh. Director of Training, Rich Higgison. Director of Safety, Steve Hicks. If there are any other nominations, speak now. I move to close the nomination. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right. If you had not voted and are a member of good standing, and that is dues are paid, we encourage you to devote this evening. Here are the slate of officers we present and the directors that we present. So all in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Please actually stand up if you want to go ahead and vote. Who haven't voted yet? Yeah, we, we had online voting, just to clarify. Right. If you haven't voted, then now is your opportunity to vote. So if you have not voted and you would like to vote, please stand up. Okay. I'll hand it back to David. Neil, are you, you, you can, can you help me count? One. <laughs> Seriously, two. <laughs> but you already voted, though. Okay, you're going to have to have them actually vote. So if, if, you, if you approve the slate of officers, then raise your hand. All right, cool. Now we need to count that. Thank you. Thank you, Calvin. I'm a woodworker, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What'd you get? That's what I got too. Is there anyone opposed? Thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. All right, so before I leave the stage, we're going to hold a special uh, board meeting and we'll share the results with you when we get back. Thank you for your time. Okay, Rich, you want to come up and sort of uh, grab the ball while we have a, a quick uh, board meeting to go uh, make the votes official? So um, first off, I wanted to take a moment to recognize Kevin Thomas for all the years he's uh, service he's provided as train director. Um, he's been an excellent mentor and an all-around good guy and a, 
and someone who's really helped to move that training program forward. So if we could take a moment to recognize Kevin, I'd like to do so. Next, I want to tell you about some upcoming uh, programs that we've got going on. Uh, first of all, in May, we have a skill builder that will be the first Saturday in May, and it is going to be care for table saw blades, router bits, and that is going to be with Rowan Moeller back there. Okay. Um, there we go. That better? Okay. Um, anyway, the May skill builder will be for on table saw blades and router bit, bit care. So. Uh, in June, right now, I don't have a June skill builder. So, if you have a skill or something that you would like to share is on the first Saturday of June, please let me know and we'll get you on that program. In addition, um, from the last meeting that we had, I had a couple people come up to me. One asked for if we could possibly have a skill builder on veneer repair. I've done a lot of asking around from people about does anybody know anybody who's got skill in veneer repair and I've been unable to find someone so if you have some skill with veneer repair or you know somebody who does please let me know um, because I think that'd be a really interesting skill builder um, also was asked if we could have somebody who knows something about French polishing could possibly do a skill builder on that so those are two skill builders that people have asked for and I could use some help identifying somebody to actually do that skill builder. Um, okay, so then um, we've also got several new classes that will be coming up pretty soon. We've got an introduction to scroll saw. That is gonna be on May 18th and this coming up Tuesday, that's when enrollment for that will, will drop. So if you've been thinking about maybe wanting to do a scroll saw class, George Rexroad is gonna teach that. He's He's excellent with, skill, uh, with the scroll saw, and this will be a great class to get started using the scroll saw. Uh, yeah, I'm saying that right. Um, so then also in June, June 17th and 18th, uh, David Roth is going to lead a class on uh, making an intarsia fleur de lis. So it's kind of a small introductory project. It's going to be just on two nights, uh, June 17th, June 18th. Um, that will, those will be night classes. If you're interested in that class and you don't know how to use a scroll saw, it'd be really good to sign up for the scroll saw class first. Um, so, and then third, uh, we've got a carving class that's coming up with Dan Robido, and it is going to be on creating a stilt sandpiper, and Dan's going to come up and tell us a bit more about that class. So. Okay, I've got to film there what a sandpiper is. So if you want to roll that beautiful bean footage, there it is. Look at that critter. That's a stilt sandpiper. Okay, it's a shorebird. And that is what we're going to be carving. I teach bird carving, and I get involved in what I do. But at any rate, when I teach, the class is going to be in, in May. It will be announced here shortly. I take six students. I carve a sandpiper right in front of you. All you got to do is do what I do. You see me do it, then you do it. But I'm going to show you the, the mystery of how you get, you go from, from something like this, which is the model of how you, how is it possible to go from this to this, and there's a process. And then I'm gonna show you how to paint in oil. Do I got the other way around? Which way around? I don't know, but at any rate, I hold nothing back, and a lot of bird carvers, they teach so you can take more classes. I teach how you, so you can ride the bike. I show you how, and I show you why. And when you're done, I don't quit until you have a finished bird. And then I explain why this is like this, and why you put it, mount it like this, and why it's so high. 
the whole thing. So, and if you learn how to do it, then you can get a, you can carve stuff like this. If you learn the approach. So, that's what I do. And I, I will explain the tools that's involved, but you need to come to the SIG meeting, the carving SIG meeting, this uh, carving coming Tuesday from six to eight. I'll have all this out. I'll show you about the uh, color mapping, the tools that's involved and everything, and then you can make your decision. But I only take six students at a time. And that's my story, and I'm gonna stick into it. Cal, are you ready to take back over? We're done. So did you did you do skill builder? Did you do I did skill builder? Did you do any of these I did classes? classes? Oh. Do you want to announce the skill builder? We did that. You did that? And yep. Okay, we did that. so now we, we got, got to Dan Robido. We just finished Dan Robido. Sweet. Okay, perfect. Okay, the uh, board did meet, so David, if you want to come up and uh, share the results. Thank you, Calvin. Um, the, corn ha the quorum has been reached. The slate of members have been approved and voted in. The new members are President Calvin Hobbs, Vice President Ron Hall, Member at Large Craig Arnold, Director of Membership, Jim Berard. <laughs> Director of Communications, Brian Robaw. Director of Training, Rich Higgins. And Director of Safety, Steve Hicks. Let's give these gentlemen a good hand of a round of applause. <laughs> With that said, our board meeting has been adjourned. Awesome. Thank you. Good job, Dave. All right. Um, I guess I got just congrats. I thank you all for reelecting me. Uh, uh, of course, twice. No, only one, just once. Um, so we're going through and appreciate Rich uh, going through uh, taking the taking the mic while I go. Now we'll talk about our SIGs. Now uh, Dan just talked about the carving SIG, which is uh, the fourth Tuesday of the month, which would be. Uh, next Tuesday coming up. Uh, laser engraver SIG, uh, Curtis is here. Curtis, do you have anything to talk about? So there's gonna be some map making techniques presented at the laser SIG. That's the fourth Wednesday of the month at, at seven, so that would be April, tw April 28th. Um, um, that, is that the right? That didn't seem like the right date. That would be April 24th. The date's the 17th, correct? Um, scroll saw SIG, uh, is George here? George, do you have any announcements? So uh, second Wednesday of the month at seven, so that the next one would be May 8th. And the CNC um, SIG, and I didn't explain, SIGs are our special interest groups. I think everyone knows that. Uh, this, the CNC, God bless you. The, uh, I sneeze like that too, no need to get cheated, right? Um, the uh, third Tuesday of the month uh, from 6.30 to 7 is the CNC group. Is uh, Ed or, or Gary here anything special to announce for that? Well, they do a great job. So if you're interested in the CNC uh, group, come on out and that would be May. That would be May 21st. Um, so now officer reports. I don't think we're gonna have a lot. David, anything additional you need to report? Nothing. Uh, John Steyer is not here, but, uh, oh, he is here. John, come on. We missed you. Do you have any announcements for, uh, for the uh, guild from uh, the treasurer's point of view? Uh, we need to get you a microphone. This is why I was Come. never in marketing. <laughs> Come join me at yes. the table. 
Um, so for our first first Friday, I don't know if you've <laughs> talked to him about. Okay. From a financial point of view, we raised $685 in sales across, I think, six vendors. And uh, there were about 40 people that came through. No? All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Craig do the rest of it. 68. And I believe Jim Berard said he sent out 22 information emails to those that were interested in, sorry, <laughs> in the guild. And so for our first time doing it, I thought it was a very good event. A uh, lot of traffic for uh, little advertising for that first week. And I think we're doing well with it. Awesome. Thank you. Craig, do you want to come uh, kind of give a little, little bit of add to that a bit or any other announcements? Catherine's not here, is she? Anyway, Catherine O'Hare is the chair of the Guild's First Friday efforts. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can always get a hold of her. Her contact information is on the Guild contact page. Uh, uh, for the event, we had 67 more people walk in on Friday. They've never been to the Guild before. And that's pretty good. Uh, we had a total of 10 sales. Uh, we're totaling $685. Thank you. Um, and so the Guild, uh, as a commission, keeps 20% of that, so that was $137 that came back to Guild Treasury. Uh, we had no sign-ups, but Jim Barrett, our membership director, uh, did send out 20 some emails and hasn't got any responses yet, so he'll do that again. Uh, our goal is to continue to hit these people up until they're tired of us or they just relent and join. Because <laughs> so, that's our number one goal with hosting these events is to get people to become members. So we're going to be asking some of you that are familiar with the guild, the tools and all that, to uh, come down on that first Friday and be a tour guide, be a greeter, you know, go down and sit at the booth down there and direct people up here to the guild. So, because we've got some beautiful woodworking, there's some beautiful turned items, some beautiful carved items, and of course my beautiful furniture was here. <laughs> but we are going to look for people that, that have a passion for the guild to come up and, and uh, play tour guide for a couple of hours or be a greeter for a couple of hours. So if you get an email from one of us, don't run. We know where you are. So anyway, thanks. Awesome. And I appreciate all the work everybody did, uh, not only Catherine and Craig, but all the people that volunteered. So keep up the good work. We appreciate it. And I think the process will just get better as we, as we learn a lot and, and improve our product improve our, our way of interfacing with the community. Um, so Chuck, uh, you have some items for sale today? What you got? Come on up. As I'm sure Hello, hello. As I'm sure you all have scoured your emails and saw that we're building more turf boxes. On the plus side, it means we have a lot of Baltic birch ply scraps for all of you crafty laser people to come by. A lot thanks to Robert and Stella who spent the whole day sawing today. On the downside, there's a lot of you I see here now that I haven't seen this week, and that needs to change. We need, we need to participate in this project. We're not making it on First Fridays alone. We gotta, uh, this is one of our good fundraising <coughs> projects. We have 700 boxes to build over the next few months, and it goes real, real well if people show up. But if you don't, dues go up. It's your choice. Generally, we've seen people don't like dues going up, so it wouldn't hurt to come in and help out. Also have some pipe clamps that were donated in excess to our needs. 
and some fire extinguishers that were donated to give away to anyone that needs an extra fire extinguisher. So come over, wallets out, on your way to the raffle table, pick up some plywood. Can I? Uh, I will say, you know, I've heard a lot over the years, and certainly been a part of. Why do you always have them during the day? I work during the day. I can't come during the day, and I understand that. I I worked during the day. Well, I went to work during the day, and no, you're only available in the evenings. So then I'd have work calls in the evenings, and nobody'd show up. And their response is, well. Not this evening, <laughs> because all the other stuff that, you know, kids, games, church, all this stuff is in the evenings because they're, they're accommodating that you're working. Um, but we can, you know, we'll work something out. We'll leave you, we'll leave you a task. Also, if you read the uh, newsletter, well, of course you read the newsletter. We have some openings for foreman. And if you act now, <laughs> I will put you in at my pay grade. <laughs> and you know, oh, I want to raise. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to need to see more from you. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate it. And yeah, if you all can, yeah, I know. Uh, if you could make it and you have an inkling to come and do the turf boxes, definitely sign up and come help. That really does help our bottom line at the Guild. Um, going down the list, uh, communications, is Brian here? Any, any, uh, any announcements from communications? Um, nothing to report. Anything, uh, Ron Hall for newsletter, I know you were looking for a new editor. Um, so great job on the newsletter again. And newsletter, uh, if you're working on something and you think you could put together an article, we'd love to see it. But uh, Ron has been uh, faithfully serving as our newsletter editor and need someone to step up. And, uh, and, and uh, if you're interested in that, if you feel like you could do a good service on that, uh, go see Ron or come see me. We could definitely use your help. Um, I know a lot of people are probably pretty good at, it, at the exact skills that we need. Um, Don, you have magazines for sale, 25 cents each, five for a dollar, books for a dollar. Uh, plenty of magazines, not so many books. But if you're, uh, if you're looking for some extra reading material for low investment, uh, great old magazines over there. I'm sure I'm sure you all are like me. You probably paid a lot for those magazine prescriptions subscriptions over the years. Um, Want to remind everybody to check us out on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook, we have a guild page, and then we have a group, and it's pretty good at interaction with the community, answering questions. Uh, Instagram, if you uh, tag the guild, if you have your work out there, it's, we have a we have a guild page. It's uh, kind of nice to get some interaction out there, get some comments, have a place to show your work. Um, and then definitely check us out on YouTube, our YouTube channel. We have 441 subscribers now. Um, and just a lot of good content out there. I think some of the videos are, are great. If you, if you happen to miss a meeting and you really wanted to see, you know, Matt talk about wood identification from last month, it's out there on the web. So, um, Check it out, and skill builders go on the on the on the uh, YouTube channel as well. Let's see, um, Chris, do you have any announcements as far as AV or events? Um, events we already kind of touched on uh, first Friday uh, for the events uh, coming up this fall. I don't have the date finalized yet. Uh, they're supposed to be finalizing that here very soon, uh, but Lee Nielsen is interested in coming back to uh, visit us. So we're Yay. As of right now, we're looking in October-ish, uh, but once that gets finalized with their schedule, it will get start getting posted out. Awesome. That'll be great to have them back. Um, 
Membership, Jim Berard, do you have any announcements? 728 members currently. 731. Yay, 731. <laughs> Growing all the time. Um, Matt, do you have any announcements as far as programs? Okay. Um, yeah, the pro tonight's program is, is Alex from, from Woodcraft. Uh, but what I'd like to do, and, and Brian uh, gave me a really great idea. Uh, first Fridays are fascinating. There's like thousands, thousands of people. But there's also hundreds of vendors. And some of those vendors are woodworkers and people who do some really crafty things. And since the Kansas City Star doesn't have a person who tracks down those people, like that's where I used to get all my information for, from before, is from the Kansas City Star. Uh, but now I've discovered First Fridays with all the crafters down there. So what I'm hoping is to be able to bring in more live people. I love doing the Zoom. Uh, that's some, it gets some really pretty interesting people, national people, to do Zoom meetings with us. But I think everyone really prefers to have, some, have a live person up here doing it, talking about whatever. So, but, uh, the only problem is when I'm sitting down at the table down at First Friday, there's hundreds of people going by. In, the, the alley is like 10 feet wide. 12 feet wide and you know our tables in there and there's flower boxes on the other side so there's no more than two people deep I suppose walking through the especially when the Hare Krishnas go through that's that's a single file for them and that is entertaining as, as it's entertaining but um, I didn't even know they still existed I'm, I mean maybe maybe this is like a, a performance art group that's just pretending to be Harry Christmas. I, I really don't know, but anyway, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, so what we need down, uh, down at the, on First Friday, we need more people because in order for me to get up and walk away from the table and go visit with other vendors in order to get more speakers here, live speakers, I have to be able to get out and walk around and do that. Right now, we had three people down at the table. It probably takes six people at that table because so many people are going by. So I really highly encourage it. It's a lot of fun. It is, it is where all the action is on First Friday is in that alley. I mean, you, you will be entertained all evening long. And all you got to do is talk to people and, and have fun. So, and that would release me for a few, for, you know, for a half an hour, an hour, whatever, walk around and I can talk to vendors so I can bring live people in here if, if that's what you want. Otherwise, we have to rely on the Zoom meetings, and I don't, don't want to go that way. Awesome. Sounds like fun. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so going down, so Steve Hicks is not here, but he, wanted, he gave me a couple of things. So there is a safety orientation scheduled. So if you've if you uh, need to get your green card, May 11th, there's safety orientation. There's only two signed ups so far, so there's plenty of room if you're wanting to do it. Take a look and sign up. Uh, they'll take as many as 20, so there's some time now. We'll fill up a little bit towards the end, but May 11th. Um, and then also, a good announcement that he has a safety committee, that, safety committee that's pretty well formed with seven or eight people. And if you're on that committee, uh, the first meeting is the second Tuesday of May, which is 515, and it'll be at the Guild at 7. And uh, Steve says he is looking into maybe making an online option if you're, on the, if you're on that committee and you want to join online, but the meeting will be here at the Guild. So uh, that's the safety update. Uh, John, do you have any announcements as far as uh, Rough to Ready? John Sloss, did I see John? Okay. Nothing, nothing to report. Um, Rough to Ready, if you all don't know, is, a, is a, a class you can sign up that you actually get to work, work your way through the machines and it, and it stands in place of the uh, safety uh, orientation. Um, Dwayne Miller, did I see Dwayne? Any, any announcements from sponsorship? Nothing tonight, except go see our raffle table. You got wonderful items over there too. You got five items in the raffle so good odds especially if david roth hasn't put his name in that okay good item so 
that that means David David's got the lucky streak that's about 17 years long uh, over there in the raffle. Um, I think that's it with our for our uh, our member our our sort of business meeting. So now we're going to do show and tell. Is it, do we have show and tell items for tonight? I know we have a few. If you have, does, uh, and Jim Bainey, I don't think Jim is here tonight, is he? I haven't seen Jim. Oh, I, you know what? I haven't seen. Okay, he's hiding back there. All right, yeah. Uh, This is mine. Um, Did you put this together? Yep. Why? Because it's a wedding present. All right. Take it from here. Um, I've got a girl that uh, I've been helping, uh, teaching her some basic woodworking. She's too young to come and be part of the membership. So uh, I've been working with her at home and stuff. And her cousin married one of my cousins. And so we did it as a wedding present for us, combining the two families. We're using her grandfather's tools and my great-grandfather's tools. And the walnut came from my brother's property. So we're trying to bring the whole family together. I don't know if you could see it from up there. This has got marble top, black walnut. I used uh, Baltic birch for my drawers. So did the uh, marble come from the Sicilian side of your family or not? No. <laughs> but um, it, it, it is nice to use your own family's tools to make presents. It just, I have a couple of my great-grandfathers. So I have different tools from them. And one of them, I have his woodworking journal from 1897. And I've started journaling my woodworking in my great-grandfather's journal. So uh, it, using my great-grandfather's number five, Bailey, just talks to me. Um, finish is tongue oil. And I was going to put some more coats of um, paste wax on it last night. My brother called me and said, I got a tree down across my property, and I need help. So it's going to have some more coats of paste wax. And that's why I haven't glued the tiles in yet, because... I don't want to get wax on the tiles. And, uh, so the tiles are not removable? They are removable right now. But they will eventually be They will eventually be glued sealed in. and glued down. And what kind of glue are you going to use to seal these down? A Loctite's got a stuff they say is for gluing down. Tile? Tile. Okay. And there's Baltic birch underneath the entire thing. So how much machine work did you do on this? Mainly it was machine work. Uh, really the about hand work was I, I, relieved, I chamfered the edges on all the legs and on the table on the top. And do they know this is coming? Yes. All right. Looks good. Any questions? Beautiful piece. Very nice. Show and tell we have, is that correct? Do we have any other show and tell? Cal, it's all up to you now. Well, I, I'm going to make, so everyone must be saving their show and tell for next month. So uh, you have one more? You just want to come make an announcement? Last month, somebody wanted me to ship them an image that I shot. I didn't have time, lost the name. Tell me your name and E-list if you're here. If not, get back to me sometime and I'll ship it. Sorry. Okay. Well, 
Uh, thanks for bringing that in, Roland. Very nice job. Now's our time. We're, 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 we're ahead of schedule, which is great. We're going to take about a six or seven minute break and uh, get, get up, go, uh, go check out the piece that Roland made, uh, grab a snack, and we'll meet back here in about six minutes. Hi, my name is Mike Jones and welcome to another episode of the Kansas City Woodworkers Guild's ongoing series of machine safety videos. Today's video will introduce you to the safety rules and requirements of the Powermatic hollow chisel mortiser. Keep in mind that like all safety videos, this video only covers the safety concerns of this machine and is not a complete training program for the use of this equipment. When in the shop, please direct any questions about using this or other machines to the on-duty shop foreman. He or she is there to act as your main resource in helping you to keep safe and provide advice in assisting you to successfully complete your project. Always remember, the most important of safety concerns is to wear approved safety glasses with side shields at all times while in the KCWG shop. Your regular glasses are not approved for use when participating in any shop activity while you are at the guild. Hollow chisel mortisers are used to cut square or rectangular holes in wood, generally for the mortise side of a mortise and tenon joint. The hollow chisel mortiser is equipped with a square chisel with a rotating auger bit within the chisel that serves to remove large amounts of material while the chisel cuts a square or rectangular hole, leaving the square corners and smooth walls of the mortise. Hollow chisel mortisers are similar to a drill press in that the mortiser combines the square chisel with the rotating drill bit in the center. The bit inside the chisel clears out most of the material while the chisel ensures that the hole is clean, square, and smooth inside. When using the hollow chisel mortiser, one must first install the proper size chisel. The Kansas City Woodworkers Guild has a selection of mortising chisels sized from 1 quarter inch to 3 quarter inch. The mounting of the chisel and bit requires that you mount the chisel into the collet while inserting the bit shank into the chuck. The chuck is identical to one used in a drill press. It is best to use a piece of scrap stock to hold the chisel and bit in place while you tighten the chuck with the available chuck key. Once the bit is securely mounted in the chuck, you then loosen the collet holding the chisel and raise the chisel about 1 16th of an inch and then retighten the collet screw. It is recommended that you then turn the chuck by hand one complete turn to ensure that nothing is binding. There are stop screws that allow you to set limits on the side to side and front to back travel of the bed. If you're not familiar with the setup procedure, please ask the foreman on duty to help you with this procedure. It's very important to remember to have your stock securely clamped into position before turning on the machine and cutting your mortises. When cutting through mortises, Please be sure to have a piece of sacrifice material under your work so that you don't risk cutting into the machine bed. Another important thing to remember when using the hollow chisel mortiser is at the position of the waste port on the chisel. You will want to mount the chisel so that the waste port is leaving the waste behind in the previously cut hole. This helps to allow the waste material to not build up inside the chisel and generate friction heat, which will dull the chisel and the bit prematurely. Please ask the shop foreman for assistance if you're not sure how to set this up. It is also a really good idea to check the chisel and bit for sharpness before you start. A dull chisel can make things a lot more difficult and affect the quality of your mortise. Please 
Ask the foreman to help you with sharpening the chisel if you're not familiar with how to do it. When you start the machine, be sure to never touch the chisel with the bit spinning. You should never allow your hands or fingers to be closer than three inches from the chisel when cutting your mortise. The auger is exposed on the side of the chisel where the waste port is located and can cause severe injury should you touch it. Remember, when cutting your mortises, the bit and chisel, ideally, should be fully engaged. Cut your first hole, then move the bed about two-thirds the size of the next hole to make the next cut. This puts less strain on the bit and eliminates the deflection of the chisel and bit and the high level of heat that can be generated by the deflection. Following this procedure will produce a cleaner cut and more professional looking result. Also, never try to hand hold the piece you're cutting. Your stock should be firmly clamped in the machine before you turn the mortiser on. Remember, the successful use of the hollow chisel mortiser is very dependent upon a good setup, especially when performing several repeat cuts on table or chair legs. When you're finished, you should take a few moments to check your work area, clean up the machine and the floor around where you've been working. This is Mike Jones. Thanks for watching. Okay, results of the raffle table for the, I don't know, I call them corner clamps, whatever. The last three numbers are six, five, eight. For the one, two, three box, or blocks, the last three numbers are six, eight, five. For the beeswax, uh, container. The last three numbers are 638. For the, uh, the uh, inlay, whatever, it's last three numbers are 660. And for the, uh, for the Oscillating sand discs, the last three numbers are 635. And the winner for the $20 gift prize for for the one two or for the show and tell went to Roland. That's all I got. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's wrap it up, come take a seat. It's, uh, it is nice that we're here, you guys know I like to keep things moving. So let's, let's grab a seat. Uh, acoustic, acoustics in here are such that we need everything to wrap it up and, and come, uh, come find your seat. Come on up. We're very fortunate to um, to have Alex here from Woodcraft, uh, a place I I know and love very well. I go there probably more than I uh, than I can afford to, but uh, it's always great to have it. I, I actually work about I work right off of 87th Street, so it's way too convenient. So uh, come on in and tell us all about your what you got going. Guys, let's wrap it up as well as up here. It's way incredibly noisy. Everyone needs to wrap it up. I don't want to be nice, but you guys need to zip it. Hello?
I good? All right. How do I turn this off? Hello, everybody. I'm Alex. I am the <laughs> manager at Woodcraft. Uh, I've been there for just about a year. So April 25th will be my full year there. Um, so hopefully you guys have, who've been in there recently have seen a fair amount of changes. Um, there's been, I call it a revolving door of bad management for the last three years, and I was brought in to put an end to that. So you're tolerating me for at least 10 years. Um, for my woodworking capabilities, I was in shop class from sixth grade all the way through till senior year. Um, thanks to COVID shutting down our classroom, I was basically able to take over the shop at the St. Louis Woodcraft. Um, from there, I pretty much just played on the lathe for about two years straight, kind of getting to know the ins and outs of that. Um, but I was able to jump down a bunch of rabbit holes as far as Kumiko segmented turning, um, secret compartment furniture, jewelry boxes, hand cut joinery. So I've got a fair amount of experience under my belt as far as just basic woodworking experience. Um, the one thing that I do not know is CNC. I still have my flip phone and I hate technology, um, which is why this is fun for me. Um, there's a lot of challenges that I've gotten to face throughout the past year. And for the most part, I haven't wanted to leave the position too badly. Um, my first time in management, so there's a lot of fun that goes along with that that I'm learning now. Um, for what we've got going on at the store, we are looking at having a lot of large changes coming our way. Um, every year, there's a national trade show for all vendors that supply woodcraft. So saw stop, jet and power matic, even ones that I don't bother to carry in my store. Um, and this year they decided to do it at the convention center in Kansas City. So I have the presidents of saw stop, corporate heads at woodcraft, everybody's coming to look at our store. So that allowed me to justify spending about $40,000 of my boss's money to give the store a facelift. So in the next couple of weeks, bear in mind when you come into the store, you might see a fair amount of works in progress. We're gonna be completely gutting the entire uh, floor plan and kind of running it in a different direction. So hopefully everything's gonna be changing for the better here in the next couple of weeks, uh, cause I have to get this done by June 9th. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, for making the month of June even more complicated but adventurous, we have a visit coming from 731 Woodworks. Um, Matt Outlaw has been doing a fair amount of Woodcraft videos on his own. He's not something that we, or he's not a uh, production that we sponsor. Um, he's predominantly done a lot of videos for the Texas operations and he decided that he's gonna be up in Kansas City in the month of June. So on the 24th, which is a Monday, we're gonna be just having a parking lot hangout. So there's gonna be tailgating games and food. So feel free to come on by and meet a YouTube celebrity. Um, that is June 24th on a Monday. Um, it will be in our sales flyer. We've already gotten the graphics approved and everything for that. So everybody that gets our monthly sales flyer will see that in advance. Um, so that's gonna be something that I'm personally really looking forward to. I've been seeing his videos for the last couple of years and actually found out from a customer that he's coming to my store. So he just spitballed it during one of his uh, YouTube lives and my customer came in the next day and said, oh, are you excited? For what? <laughs> so after reaching out to people higher up the food chain, I found out that it is legit and he's coming to the store. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, the timing of it couldn't be worse, but we're still gonna make sure we have a lot of fun. Um, so as far as what we've got currently going on at Woodcraft, we do have our classes scheduled all the way out through the end of July right now. Um, anything from introductory turnings to pen turnings, uh, we've got a new class on the books with David Roth doing his fleur de lis. Um, so we're gonna be hoping to expand our class curriculum probably around the beginning of the fall. So we're going through and looking at our classes and kind of seeing what works well, what doesn't and uh, we're gonna kind of bring in a couple of new class ideas that some other woodcrafts have had. So hopefully we'll be able to kind of shake things up in that arena as well and uh, put a little bit more money into the classroom there and kind of upgrade some of the tools that we've got that are a little bit outdated. Um, for the email that I sent Chris, if he's paying attention, we do have a fair amount of new products that are 
either exciting or just slightly different or eh, possibly worthless. But they're new, so might as well give them a little bit of a, uh, you know, a nod. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is there's a new circle jig from Wood River. Um, the thing that I really like about this that kind of sets it apart is it's just half inch steel rods. So there's a lot of cool things about it, but the fact that they gave us just a generic assembly vehicle means that if you need to do a 12 foot circle, you can literally use a half inch wood dowel and make this as big as you need. Um, so this one here out of, the uh, out of the box is ready to do two and a half to 32 and a half inch circles. Um, the one thing that I really found innovative is it runs on a template guide bushing. Yeah, I know that's gonna get fixed. Um, so it runs on a template guide bushing. Anytime you're cutting with circle with a router, traditionally you're always having to reposition your hands and your hose and your power cord are gonna get tangled up. So because this is not actually a fixed base and running in a bearing, your hand positioning stays the same all the way throughout. So your dust core, your power cord and your dust collection are all gonna be in the exact same positioning. Um, there is also in the works an elliptical jig that that can run on to allow you to do ellipses as well. The pivot point on that is a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch pin. So with the quarter inch bit that you're using, you can just simply position, I keep pointing at nothing. Um, there's a cross hatch, there's a cross hatch on the front deck that's gonna allow you to use that to center on where you're gonna be starting your circle, do a plunge with your quarter inch, drop the pin in there, and it allows for very quick setup. Um, there is also etch markings on there that show you the outside diameter if you need to cut a hole, or also the inside diameter of the quarter inch bit if you need to cut out a circle for the project. Um, so that's really innovative, just the fact that your power cord isn't gonna get tangled, and there's the safety feature of never letting go with both of your hands as you're repositioning the router um, makes that one insanely awesome for me. Uh, we've only had it in stock for about three or four months now, um, but I'm really excited to get it out of the box and start playing with it. Um, next on the list, we have a new low profile dust deputy separator. So for a lot of us who don't have access to a full size shop like this, we're traditionally using the five gallon bucket setup sometimes built into a cart. Um, the main advantage to this one is you're only four inches in profile, whereas the traditional dust deputies are gonna be about 16 inches tall. So if you are one of the people that put your separator and your uh, shop vac on a roll around cart, this makes it much more convenient because you're not gonna have to build anything up any higher. So you've got a better chance of also stashing it underneath a miter station or something like that. Um, so that one, and it's also the exact same price as the traditional 16 inch dust deputy. Um, with this new design, they claim that there's 65 or 50% more CFMs through this design. So I'm not gonna put a meter on it, but I'll believe them. Um, next up is actually a two for one. Um, some of us tend to be Festool fans. Some of us think it's overpriced, but there's a company out there called Seneca Woodworking who has been very, very fond of making aftermarket accessories for the Domino. Um, it's one of my favorite joinery tools. It's basically just a floating tenon, so it's nothing more than alignment that can do a lot of neat tricks. Um, but Seneca has been doing multiple add-on features for the Domino for quite some time. This one here is their Domi plate. Um, basically, that one is just a permanent fence that you can flip over for either half-inch material thickness or three-quarter. So it's not very exciting, but the fact that we're branching out to other manufacturers of aftermarket products and bringing them into the store has alarm bells going off in my head because they make a lot of cool stuff. Um, and if you've ever used a domino for a long period of time, you do have the possibility of fence drift on the off chance that you don't lock that adjustment down. Since that's mounted to the underside, it eliminates it. Um, this doohickey tells you that 19 millimeters is three quarter. That's about it. But for most of us who don't have the conversions in our head or my sixth grade science teacher says, oh, learn it because we're gonna have it all around the US and they lie. So for, for a small, small price, you can not have to do any conversions and just simply set it up for whatever imperial measurement you're dealing with. 
Um, but just the fact that we're reaching out to that vendor and they're allowing us to stock their product gives me a lot of high hopes because if you are a festival fan, you know that that Seneca Woodworking makes a lot of really cool aftermarket products for Festool. Um, the next one on the list, there's no pictures, so I don't have to point. We're finally getting in cherry and walnut plywood. Ah. Um, everybody knows where you can get plywood. I'm from St. Louis, I have no idea. But the fact that we're carrying in a small amount of domestic A1 grade plywood gives us a little bit more offering. So we had Baltic birch for the longest time. Thank you, Putin. Now we carry American birch and there's not much of a demand for it. So we now have a new line offering for Baltic birch in smaller sizes and the uh, cherry and walnut plywood in quarter and three quarter inch only. Um, the downside is we don't have access to four by eight sheets because it has to get shipped from West Virginia. So we've got two by four sizes that I'm bringing in now. And then down the road, they're talking full four by fours or even smaller pieces. Um, so if you're excited about cherry plywood, then it's a good thing. The uh, next thing on the list is, I didn't even want to bring it up, but it's a MagFit dust collection exclusive to Woodcraft. Uh, Chris, if you could just type in MagFit, there's a little bit more information there. Um, it's a new innovative dust collection setup that we designed. It's all just going to be magnetic dust collection fittings. So there's a two and a half inch for your smaller tools and there's also a four inch port for your larger full size tools. So you have the fitting that's got all of the uh, magnetic dots all the way around it. That's designed to be connected to your dust collection hose and the one with that white ring all the way around it, that's gonna be your steel ring for the magnets to connect to. So in shops like most of us that need a lot of mobility, it makes it very quick and convenient to just simply pop it off of one tool and snap it onto the next. You're not gonna be fussing with any more rings or uh, hose clamps. Um, the downside to this is whoever designed it at Woodcraft knew it was gonna be popular. They told us, hey, bring in 10 of this and four of these and 20 of that and some stores got greedy and brought in 100. So it's now on back order until the middle of May. Um, they grossly underestimated it and my display has been empty for about four weeks now. Um, but it is new, it's shiny, and it's really cool. Um, just the fact that you can simply just take two seconds to snap it from tool to tool makes it very versatile in some of our shops where we need a lot more mobility and we're just using a single horsepower dust collector and going from tool to tool. Um, so it frees up. 30 seconds at a time so that we are getting more woodworking done. Um, the last thing on the list is absolutely my favorite, which is weird because I hate technology, but we worked out a deal with X Tools to where we are now the exclusive dealer for their smallest, most portable F1 laser. Um, it's just a lot of fun. The main benefits to this, aside from its size, is it's the first in the world that is dual laser. So you have a 10 watt blue diode as well as a two watt infrared laser. So it gives you a lot of versatility in such a small package. Um, for testing it, I just wanted to put Woodcraft on my coffee cup and through 10 minutes of trial and error, I found out I needed one laser to cut away the enamel and another one to actually etch the metal. Um, and it was just simply one flip of a switch going from the diode to the infrared. Um, it has a lot of neat features packed into the small uh, platform. You can actually take that bottom plate out of the bottom and focus it on a larger piece. So if you're doing a cutting board and you just want to monogram the corner, you can leave it in there, close the shield and monogram the corner. But if you want to do the center of a larger piece, you can pop that bottom plate out and they show an idiot actually laser engraving his car, um, but that's their propaganda, I don't recommend it. Um, but it does give you a lot of options as far as what you can engrave. Having the dual lasers, it covers a multitude of different metals. They show silver, gold, platinum for people who are dealing custom made jewelry. Um, it comes with a small sample pack of little wood cookies, a slate coaster, a bunch of metal dog tags if you've got 15 animals. Um, just to kind of show you the multitude of different surfaces that it can engrave. Um, I played around predominantly with plywood and a couple of my coffee cups. Um, I've engraved my leather wallet for people who have seen Pulp Fiction. I'm not going to show you, but it's a lot of fun. Um, the 
portability of it makes it a little bit more versatile to have a few other accessories. So they do have a rotary attachment that allows you to do the outside of anywhere from uh, ring size. I'm just going to spitball and say maybe 10 millimeters all the way up to 100 millimeters. So you can do rather large serving bowls and things like that with it. Um, the rotary attachment has two powered rollers or also a three jaw chuck system so you can grab the inside of something if you want to do engrave it that way as well. Um, because of the small limitations on the platform they do also have a slide attachment so if you wanted to do something that's four times the size of the actual unit you can either use that for one long engraving or you can do it for batches. Um, there's a lot of accessories that can be used with that as well. I've got mine hooked up with the smoke purifier in the store. So that way I can run it in the middle of my sales floor all day long and there's not going to be any fumes or burning plywood smell. Um, there's also the possibility of setting it up through Wi-Fi. So I've got it set up that way right now to where any of my employees who want to demonstrate it, there's just a Creative Space app on their phone. They connect it to the Wi-Fi and from the sales counter, they can plug in a name tag and say, oh yeah, I'm the new guy. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with it as well as just plugging it directly into your laptop. Um, so it's, it's been too much fun. They let me take it home for a week to demo it before I actually had to bring it into the store. So I was hesitant to give it away. Um, but it's a very cool little portable unit that just has a lot of bang for your buck. Um, wow. Uh, 1500 for the main unit. So the rotary attachment and the slide accessories, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know that the main unit, that one there is going for 1499. So $15. yes, yeah, we'll stick with that. <laughs> Um, and it, it is also billed as the fastest laser engraver, so 4,000 millimeters a second. Um, so yeah, you can do a four meter long run in no time. So depending on what surface you're engraving on, what settings you have. Um, when I was doing my leather wallet, I had it done in like 30 seconds. Uh, this cup, because it was two different passes on two different settings, was maybe a minute and a half. So it is a very quick engraver. Um, they're predominantly marking it more towards the custom jewelry people, you know, they showed a lot of bracelets where it just says, oh, Cynthia in a handwritten cursive. Um, but there's a lot of potential for it in the woodworking world as well. And you can only get it on their website or from Woodcraft for the next year or two. So we've got rights for a, a limited time window. Um, but yeah, that's a very exciting new thing that we've got coming. So I think I'm done so we're going to open it up for q a if anybody's got it okay so we got some microphones around if you got a question uh, please raise your hand we'll get a mic to you and anyone online has questions please uh, ask and lindsay will uh, address it i have a question for you alex yeah do you offer a discount to guild members <laughs> i think the best i can do is 10 percent some uh, exclusions apply <laughs> just want everyone to know that's worth worth your membership right there if you ever shop at wood, uh, Woodcraft. Just in glue, clamps, and sandpaper, it pretty much pays for your membership. I will say the easiest way to remember the exclusions is if it has a power cord, automatically forget it. But for all your daily needs, yes, we do offer a membership for guild discount. classes on epoxy work at that a year or so ago maybe two yeah we had Jess Crow doing uh -huh. a national tour mm -hmm. um, and in the contract with her we are very limited in what epoxy classes we can teach just because we cannot steal her creative property um, so for the epoxy classes that we do have in the books it's going to be a little bit different. She did the charcuterie board, the uh, end table, and the countertop. So we're probably going to implement some small, like river style coasters and things like that. Um, but we do have a couple of ideas that we're kicking around. The downside is it's going to be at least the fall or winter before we can implement them and making sure that we got enough time to kind of do test runs with it to make sure we know how much time to allot for it. But yeah, the epoxy is still in high demand and that is something that I'm seriously considering for multiple style classes. Good. Yeah.
one of the one of the things that I've bought a lot of, probably way too much at Woodcraft over the years, is the Swiss made carving chisels. You guys still carry you stocked up well on those? That company is the bane of my existence, but I do what I can to maintain inventory. Um, even before COVID, this company limited itself by having one steel supplier. When COVID hit, other priorities came up for the steel, so their back order status is getting a little less irksome, but not by much. To where if the seven sweep by 12 mil is out of stock, I try to find something comparable that is in the warehouse to bring in. So I do have a full slat wall full of carving chisels from Swiss made, both in the full and intermediate, and a moderate offering of their palm tools as well, because they are amazing. We do have a question from one of our YouTube viewers. Yes. Any hands-on classes for kitchen cabinets like the raised panel cabinet door classes? No, not yet. So I appreciate their terminology of hands-on classes because we do have a cabinet making class, but it is just knowledge based. So we don't have the time or the proper room right now for doing a full in-depth cabinet build for something like a small shop cabinet or a vanity. Um, the instructor that does teach our cabinet making, he leaves you with DVDs and booklets and a lot of information to make it on your own while running through the main troubleshooting issues that a lot of people have with cabinets. But as of right now, we do not have anything for hands-on. Um, the raised panel is something that has been broached to me by another employee for doing a chamfered style table saw raised panel. So that is one that we've got potentially on the books. I might point out that um, my wife designed and I helped her build our entire uh, custom-made kitchen cabinetry, not in, this, not in 1717 here, but down at the, on Mercier Street. So this shop is, plus the people that you, you meet here, uh, you can build your entire kitchen cabinets uh, right here in the shop. Uh, you'll get, you get a lot of, if you, if you have, have 10 questions, you probably get 15 answers on how to do something. So you gotta be prepared for that. But bring your stuff in here to work on it. You'll, you'll do really well. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, the, the carcass and the face frames aren't that difficult. Where you're going to run into most problems is when it comes to the raised panel, because you're either running a very large bit in a router or you're doing something fancy with a table saw. So basic cabinet construction can be as easy as you want to make it. Any other questions for Alex? All right, well, All right. Alex, thank you very much. We wanted to give you a little token of our appreciation. <laughs> you only get these cups by presenting here, so uh, that's a that's very special. And, and we always do what we call a mug shot with, uh, <laughs> that we, we come and get a, get a picture of uh, you and me with the mug. Absolutely, how did you know I was a coffee drinker? <laughs> All right, everyone, Alex, All right. thank you again for thank being you here. Thank very much. And uh, we'll see you around Woodcraft. I will definitely be here as well. So uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, fun seeing everyone. We're, you know, you, do, you guys know me. I love, I love quick meetings, so it was a little quicker tonight. So feel free to hang out a bit, help us clean up, drive safely. Uh, please help pick up the chairs. It would really be appreciated. Uh, have a great night. Yeah, uh, I forgot to mention that our swap and shop is May 18th, so we're turning our parking lot into a flea market. Good call, Chris. Thank you. A special thank you to our guest today, to the Guild's Leadership Committee, and to all of our sponsors. For more information about the Guild, upcoming classes, and events, please visit our website kcwg.org. You can also find us on social media by searching for Kansas City Woodworkers Guild. And remember to hit the subscribe button. And ring the bell for notifications.